Remember, you're just starting out. If you say you do have the amount of money to be able or a bank relationship to where you can go buy a piece of equipment, more than likely that piece of equipment is going to be old and wore out and right. used, you know. Yeah, right. and equipment breaks down. Yeah, right. Equipment breaks down right. all the time. Yeah. You know, and so say you have a, a, a ten thousand dollar labor bill for a mechanic, you know. You got to pay for that. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, you either right. got to fix it yourself or hire a mechanic to come do it. And who knows exactly. whether they're going to be available to come, come fix sure. yours. Hey, YouTubers, Profit Diggers. We're here with Luke Fielder today. Uh, and he's here with TriStar Land Solutions LLC. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the business you have, Luke. Well, it's pretty new. Just started January, at the end of January of this year. Uh, I uh, thought about opening uh, my own business for the past two to three years and finally got an opportunity to, to start it out. Uh, pretty fortunate for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing it. I've been doing dirt work for about 18 and a half years. I got pretty lucky, I believe. I graduated high school in 2004 and went to work for a small local business uh, around Dixon here uh, just as a summer job to try to make some money um, for the summer until I figured out what I wanted to do and ended up making a career out of it. It's been pretty profitable since. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Have you... Uh Got a website or a phone number someone could call? Uh, no, I don't have a website yet. It is still pretty new. We just got our um, we just got our logo done the other day. We still got to get it registered, uh, and we're we're gonna have a Facebook page, and it'll be TriStar Land Solutions LLC. Got it. Um, my phone number is six one five five three three zero zero eight two. Awesome. Very good company any at all. Mostly servicing around the Dixon, Tennessee area. Uh, right now, uh, yeah. Just since we're starting out, until I get some more, uh, some more manpower built up, mm -hmm. until we can start providing for more, yeah. for more customers. Great. Yeah, fantastic. So, what what sort of challenges have you faced so far starting your own construction company? Uh, so far, it's just uh, the main problems is just really figuring out how to start the business type. You know, just all the hoops you got to jump through just to get it going, really. Yeah. You know, you're not really yeah. taught that anywhere. <laughs> you gotta, even if you go to look on the state website, you know, it doesn't really tell you a whole heck of a lot about what your next step is. You know, you kind of got to figure it out on your own. Yeah. Um, you're talking about like the technicalities behind yeah, exactly. business yeah, yeah. and yeah, you know, getting, getting all the, yeah, the, the legal So, what sort of sources are you using to solve those questions? Uh, trial and error, really. <laughs> we, we've got uh, we've got the majority of them figured out now. I mean, we're smooth rolling now. Yeah. Um, well, the government they're they're very kind. If you like fill out some paperwork incorrectly, they'll usually send it right back. And yeah. Oh yeah. yeah you know, this wasn't right yeah. at all. You got to do something completely different. Yeah. But they, you yeah. know, they're really good about not telling you what that is. It's right. right exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It keeps things interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but now everything's been. I, I got really lucky. I got um, I got hooked up with a guy that was able to uh, provide us with monetary support that we needed that I didn't necessarily have up front. Awesome. Because um, either you got to have a a very sturdy background, a business background worth of credit, or mm -hmm. a huge stack of monetary right. stuff to get into my line of work. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. You know, we didn't have, have either one of those, so he, he provided us the opportunity with that to be able to provide yep. the equipment that we need and help us along the way to be able to get the job done. That's fantastic. So how are you approaching uh, the financial situation? Are you just paying yourself a salary that you would expect? Or? Right, yeah. Yeah, I'm, um, you know, so I, so we're working hourly right now, me and my whole crew all together, and, um, you know, you know, there's, there's up charges for for your guys, for each individual guy, or you know, certain tasks that you do, and you know, and then obviously myself, uh, I'm uh, like you said, taking a taking an hourly wage myself just so we can have a steady flow of income and uh, pay myself that way. Are you considering maybe? So you mentioned uh, equipment earlier. Are you thinking about taking any excess funds you get? And 
Maybe buying your own equipment or leasing your own equipment or establishing so, a line of credit or something? Yeah, so right now our main focus is um, just establishing a, a good line of credit because, you you know, as a company, you, you build credit just a lot like you do biz, uh, uh, personal credit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's, our, that's our main goal right now is just to establish a good, good credit history. And is that with uh, a, a equipment rental and materials and, and like a, a, your advice to someone else who says, I'm, I'm going to right. start my business tomorrow. Is there a tip you'd have for them? Um, so sort of kind of getting the ball rolling on establishing that line of credit? or So from what I have been told is uh, anywhere where you can start an account, Just it, it. It, yep. even if it's at, a, you know, for... Uh, hey, Lowe's. So the local, anyway. the lo- your, any, any local company or whatever yeah. that will allow you to start an account. Start an account. Um, any kind of credit card that you can set up specifically for your business to just buy stuff mm-hmm. for your business. Um, sure. And all of that, all of that takes an account for whenever you can start renting, renting your own equipment because a lot of the equipment that we use, it is, I think, like the cheapest piece of equipment we have right now is like. Twenty four hundred dollars just for one month. Right. Um, yeah, and then and then it, it only goes up from there. Like yeah. so that's the cheapest one. It's for a little yeah. bitty small sheep's foot roller. Right. <laughs> um, but um, you know, like we got a we have a Dozier on site right now. It's a D sixty five Komatsu. Um, I think it's I think it's book look uh, priced at like ninety five hundred dollars for a one month rental. Ninety five hundred bucks a month. Yeah, and yeah. If, you know if you don't Was have a two hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment or more, or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably probably close to three hundred thousand. Probably I'd say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, but um, but yeah. So unless you have the capital to pay for it either up front, you got to be able to have the credit history to be able to pay for it that way. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and they always look for references. And so yeah. if you have no references, then. It doesn't matter. So yeah. that's why I say, like any any small local local business that you can run a run an account through, mm-hmm. that that's a good way to build up references. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that before a lot in other videos in the past. Yeah, it seems to be the consensus is is renting makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh like yeah. While you're coming out of the gate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, and it's got its major uh, upsides too because you know. Whenever you're just starting out, if you say you do have the amount of money to be able or a bank relationship to where you can go buy a piece of equipment, more than likely that piece of equipment is going to be old and wore out and right. used, you know. Yeah, right. and equipment breaks down. Hey, right. Equipment breaks down right. all the time. Yeah. You know, and so say you have a, a, a ten thousand dollar labor bill for a mechanic, you know. You got to pay for that. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, you right. either got to fix it yourself or hire a mechanic to come do it, and who knows exactly. whenever they're going to be available to come come fix sure. yours. Yeah, yeah. You know, they got a they got a list of stuff to complete before they get to you. You know. Yeah, and I bet heavy equipment mechanics are not standing around with nothing to do. I don't know. <laughs> they're they're very they are in very high demand. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So generally, when you rent equipment. Um, are there any stipulations in there that say like, okay, well, if, if you break it, this equipment in a certain way, that's not covered for repair. Right. Work. Yeah. Yeah. And you're liable for it. And it, you know, and it usually does come at the end of that month or whatever, whenever they come to pick it up, um, mm-hmm. is usually whenever they, they charge for that. Um, but, um, but majority of the time, as long as, you know, as long as you've got good operators and you're taking care of your equipment and, Stuff like that. That's usually out, out outside of coverage cost is, mm-hmm. is very rare. Like right now, I've got a I've got a track hoe that got a log shoved up underneath it that we didn't even know about, and it blew a hydraulic line. You know, we'll have to pay for that hydraulic line. Yeah, yeah. So, Luke, how big is your crew that you operate? Uh, right now, including me, three people, three guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I've had yeah, I've had um, I had to let some people go, some people left, and, but yeah, ideally, um, I like to have on a on a grading job, four to five guys, uh, at least a track hoe operator, dozer operator. If we're in the middle of the mass mass production phase of it two truck drivers and then i'll run the roller or whatever just needs uh-huh. to be done but right now like we're in the finishing phase of this job that we're on um we're getting our subgrade ready to put stone down on a big parking lot um but i mean we're 
chugging along great. I got a great dozer operator helping me right now. I'm actually uh, trying to rec recruit him to come over and work for me full time mm -hmm. um, to be able to to eventually step up and run a run a crew of his own to where I can start building up another crew. Uh -huh. And then nice. eventually, you eventually move up from there. Oh, well, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, mm -hmm. I, I just something that caught me off guard is you're already dealing with retention. Oh, yeah. The guys want the boat. Yeah. For some, something else. And we're five months into the starting this new company. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tell a little bit about so, the yeah. environment that we're yeah. working in here in construction. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is a it's a task to get um to to get good workers. Um, you know, like one of the guys that, that quit, he uh he had some health issues and that was that was his reason for leaving. What? Uh the last guy I had uh quit was because it was um it was too hot and he <laughs> couldn't breathe running an open cab roller, you know, so I mean there's there's those is those types of issues too. And this is someone who's been in this line of work? Uh, he claimed he had. He had oh, only okay. been there for three days. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got yeah, you. there's, uh, you know, you have those issues as well. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I originally started off with uh, just three guys helping me. Um, and we wasn't able to get... Um, we wasn't able to get any off-road dump trucks, so we ended up having to hire two road trucks to haul on site, just because the availability of equipment is so, it, it, it's hard yeah. right now. There, there's, it's few and far between being able to get the equipment that you actually need. Just for the rentals? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got very lucky actually. Um, we've had a, like a bigger size dozer, like I said, the D65 Komatsu. Um, and so now we're at the phase of the job where we need a smaller finished dozer. And um, like I said, we got really lucky. They found one and actually had to send it in from Indiana. Uh, wow! And they was they was able to get it to us today finally. But yeah, and, and and rollers like you would think rollers would be not that big of a deal, but it, it took them a while to find a roller for us too. You think that's just because of so much business going on around the Nashville area yeah, right now? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it's just so Too busy around head. Middle Tennessee that. The availability for it is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I guess you guys are the first to site on some new development, right? So. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. So you do the clearing. Then you yeah, do the yeah, we, yeah. We'll we'll start off with the, the clearing trees, stripping topsoil. Um, you know, from the ground up, very first phase. Yeah. To the very end. That's good. Cool. We actually had a bunch of excess material on the job that we're on right now that uh, got pushed off and just filled a like a holler ravine in from the last phase, and so we had to deal with that. So we're having to haul a bunch off site now. Did you have to dig it out of that? Yeah, yeah, we had to get it out of the way. That way we get something down to down to something where we could actually build on. Mm -hmm. That'll be structural. No, you said material. Are we talking scrap? Or are we talking about materials that could have been... No, that, that's uh, material, about trees like dirt, and stuff. You know, oh, like oh, different oh, types of dirt. oh, like plant yeah, trees. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, so we have... I was like, wait a minute, who the hell's pushing pipe off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? No it wouldn't, have been, a surprise, guys, it wouldn't have been a surprise <laughs> if, you know, if we hadn't dug some of that up. There was, yeah. you know, ash, old tree stumps yeah. and logs and stuff that hadn't oh, been God. burned up. Yeah. And, yeah, old red dirt that they couldn't use on the other site or on the other phase that we, yeah, we had to we're having to get rid of them, you know different ways but i think we ended up with a total of like 450 loads of topsoil and we'll probably only need about 100 on the site that we're on right now after we're all mm -hmm. said and done so so you planning on keeping that somewhere uh, else it's actually for sale yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah so yeah, anybody yeah. interested in buying right that topsoil give me a call yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Now you, uh, do you guys do any sewer work, drainage work, anything like that as well, or are you just? So uh, as far as uh, underground utilities, not really. Um, we mainly focus on uh, just the grading part. Like, mm -hmm. We do have to lay like a little bit of uh, sanitary storm, okay. which is just you know drain pipe. Mm -hmm. um, we we'll we got to put in like a, a catch basin in the middle of a ditch that goes underneath the road coming over to this new phase I got you. with a head wall on the end of it and then there's a retention pond that we got to set a head wall uh, with a pipe leaving it 
Okay. And that's that's about it. I think there's a little bit of electric, but as far as anything like any kind of sewage or you know anything like that, we I, I typically try to stay away from that, like sewage, water, or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Die. Yeah. Any kind of pressurized. Yeah. Storm or any kind of pressurized line. Yeah. Well, I, I can't blame you because my next question was going to be: Have you faced any of these material shortages and, and things like that? But it's maybe not. Not uh, yet. Yeah. Not yet. Um, just for the little bit that we have encountered, um, and even in future phases, we when we do come upon, you know, like you said, uh, sewer, water, I, I'm I'll get a subcontractor that can deal with that headache. I got you. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd be curious to check out me and Mike now, too. Look at, look at Jack. <laughs> like damn Producer Jack. Professionals yeah. right here. I like um, Talk a little more, like, about just the philosophy of getting started and how you did it. Like, that's very clever where you're a subcontractor, but your contractor is actually owns the equipment like that's a that was, that's like a creative solution mm -hmm. for launching your business with limited capital you know so just right. stuff like that like, and you talk about working with your wife and she's helping you and all that kind of stuff yeah um, yes my wife she's she's definitely helped out a ton uh, just so I can have my undivided attention to the field um because not only the field area, there's also a ton of paperwork at the end of, uh, at the end of each day as well. You know, I mean, we turn in uh, weekly invoices, and for every day that we work, I'll turn in a timesheet to her. That way, she'll have pretty much a script to write out uh, to fill out our weekly invoices. Because even on the invoices, we have to give in a daily. Uh, description of what was completed on that day and uh so she really really helps out with that and she's also a lot more computer savvy than i am and so that, that definitely helps yeah. um but uh but not only that you know there's also you know the the tax stuff that you got to fill out and get turned in and yeah. um insurance uh is a, is a big key factor I mean, there's there's a lot that goes in behind the scenes that it's not oh, yeah. even seen. Uh -huh. That if it wasn't for her, there's there's no way in in hell I could be able to right. to to keep up with all of that. It's a lot to you know. We've actually got some videos yes. about um, how to get your advertising and marketing out there as well. Oh yeah, You're about so, I know we do. We do have a Google page. Or we have a Google uh, address. Google business profile. Uh huh. Okay, oh, that's, that's good. good. That's yeah, good. That. We talked about that. It's a good yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I think nice. actually it's like one of the second or third uh, businesses that comes up whenever you're in excavation or grading. Hell yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, man, I'll uh, mental note. We'll look that up and we'll include a link to that. Okay. In yeah. The video description. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Check there. Set you up a business profile. Yeah. If you're a local contractor. Yeah, yeah. I've had I've had uh, one phone call. They were looking to see who we used to do our surveying, and I had told them I had no idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were on their property line surveyed. Yeah. yeah, but for the wow. amount of time invested to get that, the yeah, fact I think that you it had took the like second, ten minutes. Yeah, and even if you get down the line, even you just get one job from that. Exactly. Man, oh what a God. return on investment. That's, oh, yeah, exactly. That's low, but I'm, I'm going to add on to that. Multiple thousands of percent return on investment. Yeah. <laughs> you want to put in at the loop, what I think you should do, you know, it has, a Google Business Profile has a post feature. And from what I have read, and I think I see it if you use that feature, it actually does kind of generate more, generate more. more visibility because Google likes to show right. it updated content mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. local businesses, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. But you had five minutes a day, you just throw something up there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I, this, us finishing up this one job that we're on right now, that that's definitely going to give us a bunch of content for us to be able to add to mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. our Facebook page. We actually got private right now. We're waiting for, for us to get our logo. But as soon as we get that going, we'll also be able to have all this content we'll be able to put on our on our Google business profile Yeah. yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, yeah and I've seen uh, some of the like pictures you post, mm -hmm. you know, and I think 
you know, at least me as a consumer or if I was in the construction field and needed to hire someone, I would want to see some mm-hmm. portfolio of yeah. what they've done. Oh, Before, during, and after, you know. Before, during, and after. Uh, and yeah. the guy that you're working with um, posts a lot of that type of content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And, yeah, and for me, you know, a lot of that stuff looks very impressive. I don't want to say his name because I don't know. Yeah, all right, and heck, he may be somebody who may be interested in coming and talk to y'all. Yeah, he might sometimes. be. happy to talk with him, too. Yeah. Um, but I, I, for me, that's only a net positive, right? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, just, for sure. Just knowing that person, contractor, has the confidence to put that information out. Yeah, there, yeah. You know? yeah, exactly. Okay, I got nothing to hide. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Doing the work. Have a job is what it looked like. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and like we talked about, you can get a, a couple of reviews up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, reviews are important. Yeah. Yeah. Reviews are important. Yeah. 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 So as a subcontractor, I don't know. I guess it depends on the style of job. I mean, you never know, right? Like I said, well, you one job. Yeah. You get one job from your Google page, and boy, mm-hmm. it's worth it already. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you know. You're not you're not gonna be the last guy to start this type of business, <laughs> right? right exactly. Be other Google profiles popping up over right. time. You know, it's gonna be essentially your competition. So, oh, yeah. what you can do to you know cement your yeah, and that, and that's act, and that's all actually something. The reason why another reason why I kind of wanted to grow in within Dixon County, just because it just seems like there's a there's a habit of going so far on a job and I yep. guess you know a lot of that is insinuated by those are the phases that get you the money and then once you get to finishing the pro- uh, process then it's hey yeah we'll get to you when we can right <laughs> you know and, yeah. and you know that's that's one thing that uh, I don't think I would appreciate that treatment no exactly you know and that, that's one thing that I one one of the things that I want to promote for for TriStar is that we are we are there to do the job from start to finish when we tell you to yeah. you know when we tell you we're going to do it absolutely it's like when you get the haircut they put that little extra bit on the back at the end it makes all this little bent what, what makes what, a big difference the, the thought I had is that it's, it's the old uh, story about um, a man who spent his whole life searching for diamonds all around the world and after he died it turns out he had diamonds all in his backyard and the point of it, it's like a fable point is you know there is fortune to be had mm, right, right in your own backyard yeah. mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of business if you if you become a dominant player in mm-hmm. your local right. market mm-hmm. very well yeah mm-hmm. very very well all right, that's your mic. That's your mic. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to figure out what you've been doing with this. That's your mic. Yeah, yeah. I'm right. yeah, myself. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot of lights over here, dear. Oh, yeah. We've got a Well, that's one thing about property days. We don't fuck around. <laughs> right. I think I just came up with our new slogan. <laughs> That's gonna look real good on our YouTube banner. These guys don't fuck around. But so, you know, I feel like politics should be left out. Yeah. Like I don't need to know what a person's where they stand. Mm-hmm. Or they don't need to know where I, I stand. If I want to know, but I'll look into it. Well, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't feel like it benefits you at all. I feel like the risk that someone disagrees with you mm-hmm. will cost you more, more yeah. mm-hmm. than if whatever your views are, yeah. someone hears those views mm-hmm. and thinks like, we like the same things. I'm going to either purchase their service or mm-hmm. continue. It's much more likely that someone would hear your view on something and think, Screw that, dude. Yeah. Right. Or yeah, exactly. You know? Person, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And not only just say screw that, dude. No, it'd be screw that, dude. I'm gonna screw their life up. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> like right. post everything bad that's, that's ever happened yeah. with them. You know. Yeah. You put this much effort into just being a good person. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Great things would happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, going back to your business. You know, <laughs> transition. I like it. Like that. I like so going back to TriStar Land Solutions LLC, 
<laughs> right. Uh, that's, what, that's what our CPA said. He said, use that as much as possible. LLC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that may be another uh, piece of advice for somebody. Yeah, for sure. Uh, use, use your company name, including the LLC, every, like, as much as possible. Well, yeah. For like a reputation uh, thing? I have no idea. Well, that's what the CPA be, uh, said. And, so I yeah. said, okay. Hmm. It could be a legal thing, too. Yeah. Like, because with an LLC, you have certain protections. Yeah. Yeah. Versus yeah. Like yeah. Maybe I, I mean, as far as, like, saying the name. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah LLC. I wonder yeah. if it's like, he's just saying, you know, it makes you sing more. Well, that's right. I, mean, I tell you what. Like Joe Blow doing business as. I, 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 and I was, I was, I don't know if this is just kind of like a. It, it was it was cool for me anyways. I had a guy call me and ask me about a position that I posted on Facebook the other day about uh, needing a laborer. And he uh, he called me. And he said um, he said yeah I've had a little bit of experience. He said you know I I, I worked for a bunch of smaller companies. He said I, I I'm pretty sure they're not as, as big of a company as the company that you work for. Uh, talking about TriStar Land Solutions LLC. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, he uh, and I said well. <laughs> funny you say that because i just started in january i've got three guys working for me and you know and mm-hmm. but you know and it i think to a certain degree of professionalism does yeah, kind of sure. does yeah. a little bit more for you too as well you know well sure. there's a challenge there right because you're going from being the doer for so many mm-hmm. years to now being the decision maker mm-hmm. and even though you know that you have a certain level of quality and that Right. You want to explain to someone like you can expect the best from mm-hmm. me. Oh yeah. It's like the fact that you have this level of professionalism mm-hmm. and you have like uh, certain like reviews or right. uh, testimonials. Like until you get to that point, all you've got is that name mm-hmm. and then the one to one communication. Exactly. Right. I think it kind of goes along the saying with you know dress for the job you want, not the dress, not the job you have. Right. You know, and and so I kind of think that that's kind of the impression that we put out. You know, yeah. it was where we want to be at instead of where we actually are. Yeah. Yeah. To give that guy that impression that that we was a big company. You know, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. great for me. That's you know, fantastic. that's because that's exactly what I want everybody to think. Yep. Well, you can be a smaller operation and still be very professional. Oh yeah, absolutely, oh, okay. absolutely. Size has nothing to do with yeah. like level of professionalism. I mean, it's so right. size. Yeah. It's not size matters. Most of the ocean. It's like the one damn time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I know I work for a multinational corporation, international corporation, and our size is probably our biggest challenge dealing, right. dealing with, we have, we have 150,000 employees globally. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know, you work for the same company and you talk with someone in a different part of the world and they're like oh yeah such and such works down there do you know them <laughs> like 12,000 employees here I don't know like, the odds that I know them are very slim so right. like, and it does happen sometimes yeah but like even for my immediate group I mean mm-hmm. we do projects in over 60 countries yeah and it's like <laughs> you know the fact that I would know somebody in, you know, Venezuela or you know, Argentina. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that guy. Oh, yeah, we went to the Mexico. Yeah, last time. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, our, but, yeah, like, there are often times where I think, like, man, I know what I want to accomplish. I know what I need to do to accomplish that. And then we have internal policies and red tape and procedures that we have to go through. There's like different colors of money. And so, you know, you can't hire somebody. You only have a certain budget. And I just think like, man, this is so stupid and so inefficient. (laughs) It's like as a large company, like if they would just say like, all right, Jeff, here's a budget for you. You manage it how you want. Mm -hmm. Boy, I could really yeah, be profitable. Yeah. yeah. But because we are part of this huge machine, yeah. most of our inefficiency comes from that huge from machine. That. Oh, yeah. The only benefit we have is because it's a huge machine, like when the cruise ship turns, like that you move a lot of people, you know. Mm-hmm. But so there, I mean, it's not without advantages, 
Yeah. But boy, it would be nice to be on a small agile team sometimes to be able to, mm-hmm. if I set out a goal in mind, no barriers. Just, yeah. Just my, just myself. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you decide you want to leave, the person filling your shoes wouldn't, wouldn't be able to sit in that chair and pick up that process you just left off. It's true. I mean, there's yeah. a turnover that's, issue. That's, that's mm-hmm. the reason you know, why there has to be yeah. all the yeah. Yeah, like it or not, but Well, I'm in a fortunate position where now I'd probably just blackmail the shit out of my I'm just kidding. It's a great place to work. <laughs>